In this video, I will show you how to do some congruent triangle proofs. Look at problem number one. Given C is the midpoint of BD and AE. So first of all, let's just write down the given. C is the midpoint of segment BD and segment AE. This really should have segment symbols over the top of it. Of course, the reason will be given because that was given. But let's mark that in the picture. Um, so if C is the midpoint uh, of segment BD, well, here is segment BD right here. If C is the midpoint of that, that means that BC is congruent to CD. So we need to write that down. So segment BC is congruent to uh, segment CD. The reason will be the definition of midpoint. If you are ever unsure what the reason should be, take a glance at the previous statement and that will give you a hint. So in this case, the previous statement mentions the word midpoint, so probably the reason is going to be definition of midpoint. But there were two segments in the given. Uh, so C is the midpoint, uh, the midpoint of segment BD, but it's also the midpoint of segment AE. So here is segment AE. If C is the midpoint of that, then that means that uh, segment AC is congruent to segment CE. So segment AC is congruent to segment CE. And again, that is the definition of midpoint. Is there anything in this picture that we can mark automatically? Guys, in general, there are two things that you can mark automatically. One of them is vertical angles. When you have intersecting lines, you're going to have vertical angles and uh, those can just be marked automatically. The other one is a shared side. So if I have two triangles that are sharing a side, Wow, that's a really crooked line. Let me try that one more time. If I have two triangles that are sharing a side, you can automatically mark the shared side. So is there anything that I can mark automatically in this picture? Yes, the vertical angles. We have vertical angles here and here. We have to use the three letter name. A common mistake I will see, some students will write angle C is congruent to angle C. This is not acceptable because uh, these two angles are not the same angle. So you have to use the three letter name. For example, we can say angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD. When you are saying that vertical angles are congruent, the reason is simply Vertical angles are congruent. So that's enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent. So we can go ahead and now say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. Now for the reason, when we are uh, saying that the triangle is congruent to the other triangle, the reasons will be things like side, 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 or side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, or hypotenuse leg. These are the types of things we are looking for in terms of reasons. Uh, in this particular case, I see that we have two sides and an angle. So that means this is either going to be side, side, angle, 
or side angle side, uh, except for one thing. Side side angle does not prove that triangles are congruent at all. So since this has to be a proof that actually works out, it really has to be side angle side, um, which means that we have two, we have an angle that is between the two sides. So we know it's going to be side angle side, but let's look at it and see why it makes sense. So notice uh, if you look at one triangle at a time, for example, if you look at this yellow triangle right here, all right, notice that the angle that is marked is between the two sides. So it is side angle side. All right, let's do a few more proofs. Let's start with the given. Uh, BC is congruent to DC. So let's go ahead and write that down. Segment BC is congruent to segment DC. And the reason is given. Next, we have segment AC bisects um, angle BCD. That is also given. So I like in the first statement how we have something congruent to something. We really need three of those so we can do things like side angle side. Now, this given that says um, AC bisects angle BCD, that is not a congruence statement that we can use, uh, at least not directly. We need to somehow take this statement and turn it into something is congruent to something else. And here's how you do it. Angle BCD goes from B to C to D. So that is angle BCD. Bisect means to cut in half. So if I take this yellow angle and I split it into two equal parts, that means that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. So these are angles, so I'm going to have to name them using the three letter name. So uh, the angle at the top is angle B, C, A, because it's, it's this angle right here, that's B, C, A. And uh, the angle at the bottom is D, C, A. Now, what's the reason? Is this going to be definition of midpoint or definition of angle bisector? If you want a hint about what the reason is going to be, look diagonally at the previous statement. Notice that the previous statement involves bisecting an angle. That is a clue that the reason is going to be definition of angle bisector. Okay, I actually forgot to mark the first given in the picture, so let me go back and do that now. Segment BC is congruent to segment DC. So we've used up the given. Is there anything else in the picture that I can mark automatically? Remember, the two things I can mark automatically are vertical angles and shared side. So perhaps you notice that we have a shared side right here. So we can go ahead and mark this, but on the proof, we are going, going to say that uh, side AC is congruent to itself. So we will say AC is congruent to AC. When you have a silly statement like this where you're saying that something is congruent to itself, this is called the reflexive property, all right? The reflexive property. So just memorize that. Now we have enough information to say that the triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Now, why? So again, we have two sides and an angle. So that would either be side, side, angle, or side, angle, side. But side-side angle does not even prove that triangles are congruent. 
So it really has to be side angle side. And it does make sense because we have two sides and the angle between. Okay, let's do a couple more proofs. Problem number three, angle ADB and CDB are right angles. Okay, they're already marked for us, but let's go ahead and write that into the proof. So there it is. Of course, the reason is given because it's right in the given. Normally, I like to list all of the given at once, and I would go straight to writing that um, angle A is congruent to angle C. But I don't actually want to do that this time because I, I need to turn everything into a congruence statement. Something is congruent to something. So I can do side angle side or whatever it turns out to be. And uh, simply stating that these two angles are right angles is not the same as having a congruent statement. Something is congruent to something. So uh, before I go on to any other statement, I want to take the given and turn it into a congruence statement. And in this case, it's going to be very simple. If you have two angles that are right angles, then they are automatically congruent to each other. So I'm just going to take the two angles that are mentioned in step one and say that they are congruent. So angle ADB is congruent to angle CDB. And for a reason, just say right angles are congruent. Okay, right angles are congruent. So there, now we have a nice congruent statement and it's already marked. Back to the given, we are given that angle A is congruent to angle C. So that's another given, so let's go ahead and just put given. And that's already marked. So we've used up the given. Is there anything in the picture that we can mark automatically? Yes, shared side is one of those things that we can mark automatically. And when you mark the shared side, you simply say that the shared side is congruent to itself. So segment BD is congruent to segment BD. Now, remember the funny little phrase that we use whenever we say that the shared side is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. Please memorize that. the reflexive property. So now we have enough information to say that the triangles are congruent. So we can say triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CDB. The reason is going to be something like side angle side or side 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 or something like that. I find it helpful to focus on one triangle at a time. So focus your eyes on the yellow triangle for a moment. So looking at this yellow triangle, what type of information do we have? Do we have three sides? Do we have three angles? Do we have two sides and an angle? Or do we have two angles and a side? So I see that we have two angles and a side. Actually, first of all, because it's a right triangle, the first thing I should check is HL. Is this hypotenuse leg? However, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So this is the hypotenuse out here. And notice that the hypotenuse is unmarked. So this will not be hypotenuse leg, but we should always check that. So moving on, we will think of this as just a regular triangle. And I see that we have two angles and a side. So that means this will either be angle, angle, side, or perhaps it will be angle, side, angle. The difference is for angle, side, angle, the side should be between the two angles. All right, if the side is between the angles, then it's angle, side, angle. If the side is not between the two angles, then it's angle, angle, side. 
So is this marked side between these two angles? Well, no, it is not, because here is one angle that's marked, here is the other angle. This is the side that is between those two angles. This side that's marked is somewhere else. So the marked side is not between the two angles. That makes this angle, angle, side. I'm going to save the next set of proofs for the next video. So if you'd like to see some more uh, congruent triangle proofs involving things like alternate interior angles, then uh, go ahead and watch the next video.